to start his round. He made a birdie on four of his first five holes. Uh, impressive. Atop the leaderboard at 10 under par, five shots clear of Tommy Fleetwood. And they'll be paired together in round three, of course. But it's interesting because they were paired together in last year's Open Championship in the third round. Fleetwood finished tied for fourth. Harmon finished tied for sixth. Plenty of guys missing the cut. Some major champs like Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, Colin Morikawa, and really most notably Justin Thomas, who has now missed two straight cuts at a major. Missed the cut at the Open, missed the cut at the Open Championship. He's actually missed the cut four of his last six events played, not having the season he hoped for. And for more, welcome in Sportsline Data Scientist and host of the First Cut Podcast, Rick Gaiman. Two-time PGA Tour winner Brian Harmon has a five-shot lead going into the weekend, tied for the largest 36-hole lead by an American in the 151-year history of the Open Championship. Rick, he has been trending upwards in his last events played here. He birdied four of his first five holes, caught it an eagle on 18 to close out his round to get to 10 under, but he had a huge par save with a chip in on 12. How critical was that shot? Yeah, it, it was massive. I mean, you've got a situation here where he's he's opened up a, a, essentially a historic lead, you know, dating back to 1980, five shots or more at the halfway point. That has never been relinquished. Every single guy who's done that, uh, seven or eight of them has have all gotten the job done. And the ability to keep that momentum, Hakeem, the ability to make these long putts to chip in for par, it's critical. This this shot right here, where if this doesn't hit the stick, you know, that, that might be 10 or 12 feet by. He taps it in for birdie in instead so there was a lot of things that went well for Brian Harmon this was the uh, golf equivalent of, of, of pitching a perfect game to make those four birdies in a row to not have a bogey on the scorecard when the golf course played two and a half shots over par and then oh by the way you cap it with an eagle on 18 to get the double digits under par I mean it was it was phenomenal it was it was nothing short of, of spectacular the, the the question is be, is going to be how sustainable this is you know he's gained eight and a half strokes with the flat stick that is usually unsustainable uh, the chip in and, and the hitting the stick from greenside stuff like that usually doesn't happen multiple rounds in a row and this golf course is probably only going to get more difficult and more penal so uh, he is currently in kind of a historic spot at the halfway point of, of the open championship it'll be interesting to see how he can keep that momentum going because it's going to be 26 hours from the time he tapped in to end his second round until he tees off for his third round, it's a lot of time to think about holding a claret jug. Yeah, the uh, former Georgia Bulldog is still the favorite to win his first major with a five shot lead on Tommy Fleetwood. Fleetwood made a 59 foot birdie on 10 to highlight his round. Uh, he was the runner up in 2019 at the Open Championship at Royal Portrush. What did you see from Fleetwood in his second round? Yeah, I was I was pretty impressed with the with the grit that that Tommy Fleetwood showed, especially coming down the stretch. He made a couple of really strong, solid putts on the last four or five holes of his round that kept him in this, as as in it as you can be, down five shots to somebody else. But he was able to kind of get up and down for par late a couple of times and keep himself in that final group. Remember, that's going to be critical. This is going to be a very pro Tommy Fleetwood crowd on the weekend in England, especially as he goes up uh, against it with with Brian Harmon so the fact that he's in the final group is is going to be critical and he did just enough to get himself into that position I'll be interested to see if he can continue the the, the trend of great play that we've gotten from Tommy this year and including you know uh, even in recent weeks but we've seen him falter a bit fade a bit on Sundays and Saturdays recently this is the biggest spot of his life yet again and we're going to see one more time if Tommy Fleetwood can uh, go in the right direction. Yeah, and uh, they'll be paired together uh, in the third round. And last year, they were paired together in the Open Championship in the third round. Fleetwood finished T4. Harmon finished T6. Uh, coming up short against Cam Smith, who went on to win the event. Meantime, some, some drama with the cut line. World number one, Scotty Scheffler made a birdie at 18 to make the cut on the number. While last year's Open champ, as I mentioned, Cam Smith, carding an eagle on 18 to also make the cut. An incredible shot here, the approach shot. This is, I mean, this is, is, this is outside of going in, that's as awesome and as good as it gets. So as for the players who did not make the cut, and they are notable, including several major champions, Dustin Johnson, Justin Thomas, and former Open champs Phil Mickelson and Colin Morikawa, for JT, it's his third missed cut at a major and fourth in his last six events played. Not having the year he'd hoped for, 
Thomas says he's concerned about being left off the Ryder Cup team. Rick, is that concern real? And what do you make of JT's struggles? It should be real, Hakeem. I mean, you know, this is a disappointing list of, of golfers, but no more disappointing than Justin Thomas because of the season that he's having, like like you referenced. You know, I, I'm reading between the lines a little bit, and I think that Zach Johnson, the captain for the Americans, I, I think barring Justin Thomas, you know, missing – a couple more cuts, not making the FedEx Cup playoffs, which he is currently not in position to do. We actually added the 3M Open next week to try to earn more points so we can even get into the playoffs. Barring Justin Thomas, you know, saying I'm removing myself from consideration, I think he's going to be on this Ryder Cup team. I don't think it's right. You know, you've got a situation where he's a, a top end player who has gone through the entire season without, you know, any mur murmurs of, of, of injury or anything like that. And he's on the verge of missing the playoffs which is almost unheard of in our game. I think if he does indeed miss out on getting into the top 70 this year, there's no reason he should be on this Ryder Cup team. The Americans are, are absolutely stacked. They're brimming from every corner of the country for guys that can play on this team, but it's got a really solid pairing in Jordan Speed. He's got a really good advocate in Captain Zach Johnson. It'll be an interesting development to see how the final two events of the year go for Justin Thomas and if he can extend that into a playoff run and Rick uh, certainly a tough year to miss the Ryder Cup that it's outside of Rome and Italy I know these guys can travel wherever they want to travel on their own dime but man that'd be tough to miss out uh, to represent your country in Rome it'd be uh, a, a quite a beautiful sight to see we'll have to send you there in place of <laughs> Justin Thomas all right I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to some people we got to make that happen all right I'm in, no problem. <laughs> Good stuff, as always, Rick Gaiman here on CBS Sports HQ. And for more awesome golf content, join Rick Gaiman and his crew on the First Cut Podcast. You get tournament previews, including DFS picks and analysis. You'll also get round-by-round -round reaction to each PGA Tour event. The First Cut Podcast, download and follow today.